You think you know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you're sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. You man score 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What's up, y'all? GYBB, it's your world's back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcast. What's up, Harry? Good? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Uh, I'm in my dad's house right now, which is why yeah. it's all, which is why it seems like it's decorated by an Armenian immigrant. It's because it's <laughs> decorated by an Armenian immigrant. That would make sense. So there's pictures on the wall of places he's never been to. Um, <laughs> but it's comfy as shit. So. Yeah. All right. Coolie cool. What's going on? What up? What up, Dre? What's going on? Harry, you look good there, man. That looks like you're in your natural environment. Yeah, I feel comfortable. You're saying I feel comfortable. To Armenia, nigga. <laughs> you need to move to Armenia. Yeah, this like, is not. You look like you're in your natural environment, son. No, no, no. You misunderstand. This is not Armenian furniture. This is all IKEA, uh, uh, Andre. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm I could achieve this without going without going to Armenia. I did. I did find a gold chain around my neck that is not mine. I don't know how it, it got there. It just popped on. Yeah, I don't know how it got there. I don't remember waking up with it. You're doing a lot of spitting or that's Turkish. That's fubu. it. I, I mean, some Armenians, Pui. not as much. <laughs> well, now, you're, now, you're, you think you have a Pui. Pui. Now, you're, now you're just doing an impression of the Iron Sheik. That's not really Pui. that's not. And <laughs> not really Turkish. You want me to do your cocaine. Uh, <laughs> Pui. Pui. I do all of your cocaine. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> the, uh, he's uh if you haven't seen if you haven't looked up Iron Sheik on uh YouTube and seen look up Iron Sheik and shoot interviews if you want to see what not to do with your life. Um it's great. At one point, Dante, you, th you remember the story where uh He's riding in the car with Marty Jannetty and his wife, <laughs> and uh, he's, he just starts smoking a joint. And she's like, I don't want you smoking in the car. He goes, you don't like I do the marijuana? Get the <laughs> fuck out my car. <laughs> you're like, huh? You don't like I smoke Ooh. the marijuana? I break your back uh, and, I have, and I fuck your ass. What? And I make you humble. I That's what he humble. uses. It. Joey <laughs> Gay, true. remember Joey Gay had that great joke. He goes, yeah. uh, "The Iron Sheik always talks about." He goes, "I put you in the camel clutch. I break your back. I fuck your ass, and I make a humble." <laughs> and he goes, "Once you break somebody's back and you fuck them in the ass, isn't the humbleness implied? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> isn't there? Is there anybody with a with a broken back and a bleeding anus it's, going?" It's not just a bump in the road, fellas. <laughs> Feeling kind of cocky. Oh, God. I miss feeling Joey. Feeling cocky. Yeah. I miss funny. Joey Gay. We got to get Joey on again. Uh, you can find those in the archives. I think we have some of those on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> By the way, everything, uh, if you haven't just checked out. Just a bump in the road. Just a bump in the road, fellas. That's so funny. <laughs> But by the way, everything is going down on the YouTube channel. So if you haven't checked out uh, it's going down on the Man School 202 YouTube channel, you can see uh, my crazy Armenian father's uh, couch. It might be underwhelming. The IKEA couches. You can see the background Andre has selected AKA today. Harry's future home. This is what you're going to evolve into. I mean, Stop listen, fighting it. I might literally inherit this. And you know how exactly. lazy I am. You're an Armenian this, dad. Let it and go. Knowing his high blood pressure, I may have this in five years. <laughs> Some and leather I'll, slippers are going to be on Harry's feet in two seconds. 
You and have to wear gonna, those. They're going to curl up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking magician. Just, just, just evolve into your full self. Oh, my God. You know, I'm only half wearing Armenian. two Aladdin lamps on his feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only half Armenian, by the way. And Oh, by the way, uh, speaking of YouTube, the level of surprise and shock when I posted the video, Harry is not white. Uh, on, our, oh, on really? the main school tour too. There's a lot of people in the comments going, "What? what? For real? <laughs> For real? So you been reading all my hate mail and you didn't say nothing?" Yeah, one of the <laughs> one of the comments. He is half, but he is not Afro ethnic neither. That's one of the <laughs> Afro ethnic. He I'm said, not, uh, <laughs> "They're like what? He's yeah. not what? No." And, and, Harry, and Harry's, Harry's the just they're saying, "Let me tell you about the white man." Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. And Harry's like. Yeah, I yeah. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. There is <laughs> the Armenian, you know. uh, and I agree with that. I don't know if you guys yeah. heard of the Armenian Holocaust, but uh, the genocide, I don't know. sure. Yeah. And people are shocked and surprised. But I take notes. That's what I always say. Don't worry. I'm working on the good side. I'm taking. I get notes. all the good stuff from Harry. All right. I'm keeping all the notes. On I got to read this do. to you. I I just got this today from Instagram. Yeah, this is from Young Old Timer about episode four thirty three. With Phil Hunt. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck that, was he on? Don't I, ever have that nigga on again. His that's views my is guy. shit. He's an idiot. Thank you for setting him straight. Um, I doubt it got through to him, though. He's <laughs> lost. <laughs> uh, Shout maybe, out to Phil Hunt. Just so you understand, we have different guests for different reasons. We didn't bring Phil on as an expert. We didn't uh, bring him on as a historian. <laughs> yeah, we brought Phil on because he is crazy. And sometimes, and that's uh, sometimes you want to see that. That's what our show is. It's a plethora of different things. Sometimes this, we interview. This is the crazy thing. You know, you people like even even if we had I mean, we haven't found one that would come on. But, you know, when you bring a white supremacist on, it's weird because the white supremacists are never the ones that are supreme. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they're never the most supreme motherfuckers. They're usually not. The, they're probably. The, they should call them white dregs. <laughs> dregs <laughs> or bottom of the barrel. The dregs is the stuff on the bottom. The scum. On I the ain't even know about that word. No, you never heard the dregs of society, Andre. Dregs. Yeah, nah. you never heard dregs of society. Nope. No. Oh, wow. Sounds right. like a song. All right. Well, now you know. We did have it Gavin is. McGinnis. Savage Twenty One did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Dregs of Society. Uh, yeah, Gavin McGinnis. But that's before he that's went his... whole, whole hundred uh, percent white All the way crazy. Yeah. With his, uh, with his, with his, with his uh, little brown children, which is really, really makes it crazy. That Gavin he's got over. brown kids. How? His his Native wife American. is Native American, like hundred mm -hmm. percent. Yeah, so yeah. you know they must have an awkward. A funny place. They got an awkward dinner. You know? <laughs> <laughs> How was I work today? <laughs> so you think in their relationship, she just thinks like, all right, he's just putting on a show, and like, like is well, it to is, her? Is it like being married to a, a professional I mean, look, wrestler? He has he has implicit bias, but but um, yeah, Gavin uh, has always been putting on it, a show. He's but. always, and that's the problem. Everybody thinks that he's, you know. He's serious. I'm, I mean, I'm not saying he's not a racist, but I mean, he's just not. He doesn't espound those things. Look, he's listen. No, you, if you're not an educated individual, you probably shouldn't have an opinion on anything. Just shut up. Shut up and read a book. Stop. Think. Stop thinking you know shit. Um, but whatever. Well, the thing is. is, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine this morning. We were talking more Trump stuff, of course, as we do every day, because you can't not. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were talking about, I forget someone in the camera were like, yeah, they're dumb. He goes, oh, they're not, you know, uh, they keep going on and on. They have an opinion. They should have kept their, if they were dumb, they would have said, I don't know, instead of having an opinion. Oh, like Melania, no. it was Melania. And I go, what dumb person do you know ever says, um, oh, I don't know, I don't know anything. Dumb people do the opposite. Dumb people right. have seven opinions. Mm -hmm. About you know nothing. I, about nothing. nothing. I shout out to Phil Hunt. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and we love Phil. And uh, we got many T-shirt slogans out of Phil. But again, yeah, Phil is never here as an expert. He's not. Uh, it's not like when we had Doctor Christopher Ryan. Sometimes he's we have... an expert in Philisms. It's That's his true. philosophy. 
You know, it's a very unique philosophy. That so you can either buy into the doctrine or leave it alone. Ooh, ooh. Here's here's the interesting. Ooh. Anytime Phil comes on, I I leave the show exhausted. That's true. I'm exhausted. <laughs> There's a couple guests that do that to you. Uh, I know Phil is one. I know for me, Yamanika is one. As much as I love her, and I love Yamanika, but you're it is uh, so fun for me. She is she fun. Like, I'm not I like saying the energy. I like the wild shit. Yeah, that's your problem. Yeah, that's my thing. I love the wild shit. How old come you on, Harry? How, how old are you, Harry? I'm uh, I mean, 37. And how old are you, Dre? 27. Yeah, there's a big yeah, exactly, difference. That's yeah. the difference. Yeah, I'm, I'm but not really. Dante, lean into that mic for me, buddy. Yeah, you because when you were 27, Harry, you yeah. didn't have the same interests that I had. We had different interests, different people. So, you know, I'm going to turn into a different type of 37 year old. I got news for you. I knew I'm going to out of my shit. I knew Yamanika when I was 27. I was exhausted with her then, too. And See? again, I love the I'm, first night I, like I met the first night I met Yamanika Saunders. I was driving to another club from one club. I go, yeah, I'm going that way. Why don't you come with me? Uh, just being nice. She spent the entire time on the phone arguing with her boyfriend at the time that she was <laughs> up, like, like, and when I say arguing, like screaming at the dude on the <laughs> phone. And this is our first night hanging out. And she was just like screaming at funny. the dude from, you know, from the village all the way to the uh, east side to New York Comedy Club or whatever. That's funny. The entire time and you know, i mean she was apologetic afterwards but still that's a hell of an introduction and again <laughs> i love yamanika but yeah, yeah she can a, be it's, tiring it's a lot it's but a lot. uh i like the wild shit is hilarious though when you get older this uh, it's just it's not it's really not a matter of of uh just a difference in personality you just when you you get to the point I'm like yeah i don't want to do that i just i don't want to i don't want to do that i don't want to I don't want to, I just don't want to keep doing that. Yeah. You know, fair I'll enough. waste my time with something else, but I don't want to do anything with it's crazy, a, uh, you know, just crazy shit. Like it just, it's just not worth the time or the effort a lot of times, you know? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, great guest. Phil Hunt is, I, I enjoy having him on. That's why we have him on like yeah, once a Har year. Harry brings him on and I'm like, uh, I don't know, dude. <laughs> like, I think it makes like, for great broadcasting, man. Sometimes I get happy get... when I see that Phil gonna be on. <laughs> like, man, my nigga gonna be on here. We about to talk some shit. That's the same way I feel, but I also know Here's what's thing, gonna you happen. Don't, you don't talk shit. You just laugh at him the whole time. Right. Man. You're not the one doing the I'm heavy lifting. Fun. <laughs> right, but you're not the one who has to do the heavy lifting and to make sure the show doesn't go off the rails. Hey, man, on the show. That's your business. You decide to be one to lift heavy. Use light reps. That's, that's true. <laughs> That's true. You know what I'm saying? My knees and back hurt in. after Fuck we're it. done interviewing Phil. Um, Don't do that. Yeah, it's a lot. But the comments, the comments on Phil, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people were also exhausted by Phil. A lot of great comments on the YouTube channel. If you haven't like checked it out, to subscribe to Man School 202. We got a lot of good comments. I saw. You know which where we got a lot of good, the one with Lord Jamal. A lot yeah. of comments. There were I some. I didn't even check it out. What? There were some people who were a little uh, pissed off. Not uh, there was one guy really pissed off about the thing you said about Patrice. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I responded to him. Oh, I you responded did. to him. Okay, I yeah. Responded he, to him. What was the thing he was saying? Uh, he was so, upset that you were saying. We were that talking about. We were talking about. So that, you know, often the people will be like, you know, they'll be talking about Patrice and and they'll be saying he's a pimp, and I said. I basically said that diff I was talking about, look, you, you can't call somebody a pimp if they're, if they're, you know, if they're buying pussy, if they're, if they're going over, you know, if they, and that. And so they got mad because they felt like I, Patrice, wasn't there to defend himself. Um, oh, that you were disrespecting him or they something? They felt I was disrespecting him because he's my friend. And so, and, and Question? So, uh, yeah. You say you can't pimp. And pay for pussy out of like the rules of the profession. Yeah, right. But don't chefs pay for meals sometimes? You know, they go to a different restaurant. They know another good chef is there to go check it out. You can still be a part of the the world of it. You can still no. You know we're, we're not talking about chefs though. I'm saying in anything like you a no, comedian, no, you still pay for same. a show. It's not the same. Though. I mean, just I'm asking. You, I'm what I'm saying. I mean, let's be honest. Just because you cook. And you're, you're a chef and you cook doesn't mean you can't pay for that doesn't make you not a chef because 
what makes you a chef is is uh is the fact that you cook. And now what make you a pimp is the the fact that you can pimp. That you, right that you you are you, the yeah, no, yeah that you are the recipient of the money. Like that oh, is, Okay. That's part so that's of the lifestyle. Right, and that's part okay. of the parameters. So it's kind of like the same thing I say when I say that there's no good, good cops. Not because I don't think that there's good cops that are good people. What I'm saying is that the parameters of police officers doesn't allow human beings to be good cops in the parameters of in the parameters of being a police officer. So, for instance, um, like I've said this before, if you're a police officer and you give other people PBA cards, you're not a good cop. Because the parameters of being a good cop means that you're supposed to uphold the Constitution and uphold people's rights, right? Okay. And you're supposed to you're supposed to distribute the law with even justice. Now, mm -hmm. uh, what the first thing is that being a police officer allows you to be has there's a discretionary out, uh, aspect to. Like you just because every you don't have to give a ticket to everybody who's who's speeding. You don't have to. But you are supposed to protect people's people's rights. So mm -hmm. and, and, and if the definition of that uh, is is you have to protect people's rights, that means if you're complicit to other somebody, other people violating the rights, that makes you a bad cop. If you okay. break the law, you're a bad cop. If you take the perks of the job, you're a bad cop. And so, even in the context of being a police officer and the perks and too, the, absolutely, because the parameters, uh, it's sort of like it's sort of like being a priest. Like you can't, you, you know. I mean, look, nobody, nobody. You've chosen a profession where you're supposed to you, be right, the, better the, than the everybody else. Oh, when well, you say perks, you're not just talking about like nice things that come. You're talking about like negative. Hurts no, too? I'm saying if you if your speed if you speed when you're not supposed to speed, right? Okay. If you're speeding going to lunch and you you light it up and you go, yeah, you know you go to the donut shop and then pull up. Your if you double park, if you park in a handicap thing, oh, you, but that's abusing the 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 power of it, right? Absolutely, because the it's okay. not just a, the abuse of it; it's it's even taking it. Look, if, I don't know anybody that works in the office that doesn't take paper clips and paper. You know what I'm saying? And pencils yeah. and pens and shit like that. But being a good a good office worker is that your work is completed. It, it has one thing. It's not a direct relation to whether or not you took a couple of paper clips. So okay. I'm saying it. What you're asking police officers to do is be. Um, is to be, is to be above reproach, and the system doesn't even allow. Hold on, reproach. Reproach meaning you're supposed to be straight and narrow, okay. all the time. You're not supposed to. You're not <laughs> supposed to let. You, you, part of it is not letting your human behavior dictate your bi or let your biases dictate justice is supposed to be distributed evenly, no matter mm -hmm. what your biases are. <clears throat> So you, what you're asking people to do is is really unrealistic to ask them to do. Now I'm not saying that there's cops that don't that are not compassionate. And I'm just saying that the parameters of the job is like, for instance, the thing is if they pull their gun, they're supposed to shoot to kill. So is that like in yes. writing somewhere? Yes. Yeah. That's in the it training. says if you touch the trigger, you're supposed if, to kill. If you shoot, you you're not supposed to shoot to wound. Or to to wing them off, like you're supposed to take them off a guy because your life. Is, yeah, absolutely. But that's also why you're not really supposed to shoot unless your life is legitimately in danger. Because that's I, where the problem comes in. Question: Because I've seen, you know, documentaries about different different military training and whatever. They I've seen mention of they learn exactly where to shoot yeah, to do they, what level of harm they need to be done. So that means that there is a thing where you're allowed to think, in okay, military. for this subject, I don't need to. Not in, so not military in is allowed to have more humanity than the policing of. 
I, it I depends. Don't, I don't know if you're talking about a sniper or, or what, what you're training. Now you're changing the degree of the I'm weapon just you asking. use. That's yeah. a different thing. You can right. still decide I don't know, where to shoot I don't someone. Know, I, don't know the, the, I don't know enough about military. I didn't serve in the military. I, I I, like I have, I have friends and I have family members that did. And I have like, even in Jamaica, my uncle's a cop in Jamaica. Like, so I've seen... Different expression Yo, of what? There's no cops in Jamaica. <laughs> Fuck off. I seen it in your smile, man. <laughs> I mean, what are they doing? Writing tickets for food that's not spicy enough? What, what are you doing out in Jamaica? What does a cop in Jamaica do? A cop in Jamaica is, is, a, is a professional bribe taker. Oh. <laughs> a professional bribe taker. That takes a good like amount of skill. That takes a quite cop. a bit of training. <laughs> well, yeah. If that's the case. Yeah, well, I've seen yeah. training day. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you want to get wet? Um, you you want to do this or not? <laughs> so so the parameters are different. All I'm saying is the, the so what I was talking about when I was talking about now, don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating that being a pimp is something to be proud of. It's not something to be proud of. It's there's a there's an ethical issue. Uh, but even in the, the, there's a conservativeness, even though in the unethical aspect of pimping, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, so there are these archetypes that this is this guy this does this, this guy does that, this guy does that. You know, um, so just like in the fire department, you have a hook guy who goes in and brings the, the thing down. You have a ladder guy. Yep, you, you know, whatever. So every so what I'm saying, what I was saying was that there was individual, this tricks, hoes and pimps, and you can't be a pimp and 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 pay for pussy. This is what I said. So everybody got mad at me because not even on occasion. Yeah, no, like, not on occasion. Because like like how you say there's levels to it, right? And there's like pimps who are like glorified pimps with the best bitches ever. And you from a different part of town. What, with like I'm, not saying the is, what I'm saying is the parameters of it is is ve very conservative. It's a very okay. conservative kind of thing. Not I'm not saying it's not as conservative in terms of it's not unethical because it's something that I'm not proud of, really. Okay. I'm just saying if you're gonna talk about it, it is what it is, right? It's like saying who's the prey, who's who's the carnivore? If you're a carnivore, you gotta eat meat. Right. Yeah. That's what it says. It doesn't say you can't eat vegetables, but it means you eat meat. You okay. can't eat. You can't eat vegetables and only vegetables. Be a herbivore and eat meat. The minute you eat meat, then you become a carnivore. That's what I'm saying. So I made a I made a, a distinction. But there's a middle ground where you are an omnivore when you do both. Yeah, but then that's a different classification. You can't oh. run around saying I'm you know, a vegetarian. I'm you the can't king say of I'm a vegetarian and eat bacon. You can't you, you can't mm. do that. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that that's just not you can't do that. Well, I mean, it's interesting, Dante, because I maybe you take it a little more seriously because you actually pimped and you're talking about two different things here. Or, or when yeah, people say like the word <laughs> when people say the word pimp now, it just do you think they're saying that people have no, game? But this, but this is yeah, but that's not what that's not what pimping is. And and let's say somebody's a, a player or a Mac is all of those have different uh this is this is very Deepak Chopra, where you just take okay. words and you 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 take words like quantum quantum physics and you give it a whole nother name that has a, a whole other description that has nothing to do with it when it has a when there's already been an established definition for what it is you're talking about. So, but that's neither here nor there. So I made the distinction, and people got mad at me because they said I was bringing Patrice down. Now let me let me go on for the record. Um, Patrice was one of my best friends. Um, I would never be the comic that I am without him. Like the things, and a lot of the principles uh, were. I mean, we bounced stuff off each other. Right. But I had already had my own particular philosophy, which in some cases coincide with him. In some cases, it didn't. Well, hold on. let's let's be realistic here. You had well lived the life of be having game long before Patrice sure, came around. Sure, Patrice sure. helped you out comedically, no doubt. But right. But it had you, nothing to do with girl. He didn't teach had me nothing about women. Girls. Right. I mean, he didn't teach me nothing about women. Like right. there's okay. nothing that he said that I was like, oh, 
yeah, oh, you're right. Nothing. Right. I, absolutely not. In fact, we disagreed a lot. And a lot of times I would tell them that, yeah, that's not, that's just not true. It's just not true. So. Um, I think people get the misconception because you were a rookie as a comedian and he took you under his wing well, a little was, bit as a comedian. Well, here, here's what happens. The, so so I, I really had to rest. think about I had to think about um, because, you know, it's it's interesting that, first of all, I was four years older than him. I had already lived a life before I met him. Um, I came to him in the in the, the sunset of my life, you know what I mean? I was, I had already been married, I had been divorced, I, you know, I, I had, a, you know, I, I raised children and the whole thing and I had a job and, a, you know what I mean? So, um, I was a grown ass man. So, so people, because people was like, oh, he was his right hand man. It really was a mutual friendship. We had a mutual friendship that, you know, we, you know, we were like minded and he was an extremely smart dude. and. You know, and he was an amazing comic and stuff, but he didn't teach me nothing about women. I learned nothing from him about women. We might have debated some things, but that just wasn't the case. So, um, so I thought about, um, I, 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 so there was an introspective thing where I was like, am I being, am I being egotistical by or taking shots for, a reason other than the like why am i why is this important distinction now don't get me wrong i have had you know like we've been doing this podcast for eight years right yeah. I, but i have been helping guys in relationships and with game probably since i was 20 you know when i was 20 years old i was doing that maybe even before that no so, doubt you were always helping people even before we were doing the podcast together, even before, even before we Black got Phillip. close. In fact, the reason why Patrice put me on Black Phillip in the first place was because he knew that I was talking that shit before, the, before we even went on the radio together. So, I, you, so and, and, I, and I do, it is annoying at times when people go, you know, people that have never heard anything other than the Black Phillip show, and they go, Oh, this was his right hand man, or or I learned so much from you and Patrice when some of them have been listening to me for eight years of doing this podcast, or even consulted with me directly, and somehow, somehow it becomes lean in, some, it becomes somebody else's, you know, it's become some somebody else's credit. But I I really explored that, and I'm saying I'm not going to say that I'm not that it does it's not annoying at times, but. But I would never take shots at somebody, especially at a friend. And I mean, both of y'all know that. I'm, that's just not sure, me to do that. Because if I'm taking shots, I'm taking shots. You know I'm taking shots. And I don't have no qualms about letting you know I'm taking shots. Ask Will Sylvan. He'll tell you. Uh, and, and a few other. If I'm taking shots, it's, it's, it's evident. And, and both of y'all know me for a long time where you oh, know sure. it's sure. obvious when I don't like somebody. Yeah, I don't... You don't I'm, you don't uh, listen. I've had friends of mine that you don't like uh, that I, I've dealt with that. You're like, I don't like that dude. And you're cool. I've about had it. girls you're, that you dated. I'm, yo, I don't like yeah. that bitch. And, yeah, and this true. is why. So that's true. So, but I, so, you know what? I uh, The other thing I think it is, is that you do take this show and everything you teach very seriously. And sure. so there's a lot of people that hit us up and go, Oh, I've been, we still get people who don't know that we're doing the podcast now and they yeah. just discover us like last week, especially on the YouTube page. Right. They'll be like, oh, I didn't know. I've been listening to the Black Phillip show. And blah, blah. You take that very seriously. And the thing is, you feel like the lessons of the Black Phillip show are, were good for the time, but you've evolved a lot since then. I think that's the other thing is that people are listening to the Old Testament and you want them to be careful because it doesn't help them. Right. It's not the best information. Well, like I could always tell when somebody came upon the show later and they would listen to spe specifically Black Phillip because they'd be like, yeah, I'm fucking with this bitch. And I'm like, and I don't even talk like that, really. You know what I'm saying? That's not the pronoun that I use. I'm not saying I, I, I haven't or I don't. I'm just saying I could always tell the the the, the tone the of what vitriol the yeah. between them because and that's the one of the reasons why i why we change the philosophy because you can't really you can't really make good decisions 
when you're when you're basing your decisions on some kind of anger based on on some anger or some situation where you're you feel as though that you have been mistreated and honestly that was a lot of what the what what you know what was coming from when we did black philip um as opposed to um you know what we said you know much later which was you can't be mad at fish for swimming so i i, I the first thing when i got the comment i was like I, you know is this me ego tripping and then i thought right. about why i thought so 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 I mean, and, and Harry and Andrea both will testify to this, is that I really, not only do I believe the, the, the things that I say, but I practice it in my own no, life. No doubt. No doubt. And one of the reasons why I practice it, because I've found that authenticity, credibility, and, and, and empathy, the three principles are the principles that supersede everything else, no matter what the situation, no matter who the woman is, no matter, even if it's a woman and she's dealing with, and I advise her prospectively from, uh, from the man's, from, you know, about somebody she's dating. The same principles, because it, at, when you boil it down to the root, that is fundamental. Now, how you apply that and how well you apply that is the thing that's difficult. So, so, so I believe, I believe the, what I, what, what, what I'm saying. And so here's, here's what I really, what I realize is, so I find that people will put Patrice on a pedestal. I find even that guys will put me on a pedestal, guys who are not in general, but people who follow the show. And what I've said over and over again, even Harry used to say this, look, I'm not you. Right. Like I would go do this, do that, do it. And Harry would go, yo, I'm not you. I, I'm not, and I go, look, before you was you, before I was me, I was you. That's what right. the, the, because the bottom line is the principles. It's not me. Now you can find your own style. In fact, that's what I want you to do. I want to teach you how to fish so you can fish on your own. And well, and that's what I had to learn to do a lot because sure. your style, the rules are the same, but the application is not necessarily the same. Right. So it's, it's the equivalent of like coaching a team and, saying, all right, you need to make sure your players are disciplined. You can do it by yelling and screaming, or you can do it just by enforcing the rules calmly or being very, you know, calm and matter of fact. That's You can do it different ways. But I would rule- even go further than that. If you got a basketball team, the way you, win, the way you win, win, win games is you put the ball in the hoop. How you do that is very right. – it could be very different from – uh, and and some play defense and some just all off, whatever. So the point is, there's a difference. But on a fundamental level, you got to put the ball in the hoop more than the other guy. And I found I would do the same things that Dante does and still do, but in a different tone and a different manner. Right. And right. one that's just more. I'm a little more laid back with things, but I can just still be at the same level of you know we, we're still in the same position of stop this right now. Right. It's just a different method of stopping it. I can do right. it. Dante is, you know, your catchphrase is, first of all, get the get fuck, the fuck out. out. Right. <laughs> and I don't do, first of all, get the fuck out. I w- but I will stop it all the same. Go. And I've also learned to soften my technique when, when I need to soften my technique. But my, my point was this idolatry, this the way in which we idolize idolatry. Our, our heroes, right? I, I don't I, know how I, to spell that, nigga. I know how to spell it, son. What I said you? I don't. I'm trying to oh, look it up. Look it up. Now, look, it up. Tree? look it up. Look it up. I'm about look to type in I dollar look it up, skinny Phil. So, <laughs> so he's gonna type into Google the letter I and then Dollar Tree. Watch me. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gonna be like, he gonna be like, it's gonna be a, a discount store. Yeah, that's what came <laughs> up, nigga. DollarTree.com. <laughs> I get it you got to treat everything like a dollar tree <laughs> that's so, the philosophy of life so the the idolatry the fact that you admire you put these people on a pedestal is re- the the reason why we do that is because we really want to separate ourselves <clears throat> from our heroes so that we don't it gives us an excuse to be less competent so for instance, if you go, wow, this person, I admire this person, this person inspires me, but they're still human and so am I. And if I want to 
uh, if I want to accrue a certain level of proficiency or a certain level of respect, then I need accrue. Go ahead. A crew, and that doesn't mean that doesn't again? mean a whole lot of niggas on a boat. All right? right. Yeah. <laughs> a whole not, crew I, of niggas. No, 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 no. A crew. I a get crew it. You got to assemble a crew. <laughs> you need somebody at the front of the boat. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's you to 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 it's a way of not taking responsibility for your life because you go, oh, this is this is some magical dude. This dude is magical. So because right. he's magical, how could I ever achieve that level of proficiency? It's funny. If people saw the roster of people who it's worked on, like I just think of Lenny Marcus, who is the least. Yeah. Lenny Marcus, comedian, is a uh, – he's n- the complete opposite of everything you are. He's this an IT Jewish guy. guy he's a white, Jewish IT guy. White Jewish guy with, with glasses. Just the opposite. There's, right. there's, there's no Dante Nero in Lenny Marcus, right, except right. when he followed everything you told him to do, initially anyway. Yeah. Uh, it worked. Right. Right. Because the the idea is still the same. All the principles are still the same of maintaining control and knowing your value and not negotiating your non-negotiables. Right. So so All that's the same. But if when you start to go, oh, this guy is magical. This person is magical. What you really are doing, what you're really saying is this person has something that I don't have that somehow I am not a, I'm not capable of achieving a, le- a level of, of proficiency in whatever we're talking about, because this person is special. So when you you if you look at if you look at look and, and don't get me wrong, I mean, in some cases you won't, but. Um, if you want to say Michael Jordan is, is a magical Negro, right? Yeah, he's magical because he worked hard. He, he was magical because, and for me, you know, Michael Jordan's an asshole, but he sacrificed kindness and empathy to be the champion that he is. I mean, I'm not saying that he didn't have natural ability, but he worked at it and he consistently worked at it and he drove himself constantly because he didn't think that there was anybody better than him. And so I don't want nobody to think that I'm better that I'm better than anybody. I don't want them to even think that Patrice is better than them. Because if we all, all heroes and all our idols have flaws. So if you, if you understand that we all have flaws, it's a matter of overcoming those flaws. And if we don't overcome those flaws, it's, it's uh, the fact that we've made a, we made a decision to not make the sacrifices that we want. Now, I'm not saying that somebody can't, you, you, you can't achieve that. Everybody can't be a Michael, uh, Michael Jordan, but dog, if you make the sacrifices that he did, you still going to be in the game. You don't have to be Michael be, Jordan, but you could, yeah, you could be at the all-star game. A, you, could you could be, be in the a league. Reggie Miller. You could be a, you know what I'm saying? You could be a lot of people that are, that are so proficient that, but when you start to idolize people, it gives you an excuse not to be who not to reach your full potential because oh this dude is magical this this dude is the harry potter of game so i could never be that when you you can't and i mean I, I, harry will tell you in a minute i mean not just his own personal growth but he's seen people advise people and so being clear about what the truth is the truth uh, authenticity truth is supersedes everything you have I've to watched start. it happen. I watch you take people who are just don't know what they're doing. Uh, guys who are just very sheepish, don't the complete opposite of you. Give them advice and help them build their confidence and you know with the structure of everything. Yeah, you know, learning the five bri- uh, laying the five bricks and learning how to you know know what your value is. And I've seen that I've watched their self esteem grow. You know, these right. are friends of mine who are I watch them months ago being very depressed and down and they're just nothing like you right and they don't have to be and even when they when they get it together they're still not like me right but they become the best of what they uh, what they can be and that's all i've ever wanted and the idolatry of of heroes gives you an excuse not to do that 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 was really so being truthful being credible and understanding the empathy of people now I will absolutely agree that sometimes I'm uh, my honesty is a little brutal for people. 
um, and because people, but like I've said before, what you feel doesn't change the truth. The way you feel, all it proves is that you feel that way. That's it. So, I mean, you can either, you, you know, you could get your butt hurt about something or you could get up off your, you can get off your butt and do some work and work on you and be the best version of yourself. You know, and if you're not doing that because you rather, you'd rather, you know, be sucking somebody else's dick, you know, just polishing somebody else's nuts instead of working on yourself, you, you're just not going to get there. But I honestly think it's an excuse. And your, your offense to the truth does not change anything. It doesn't just because you're offended by the truth doesn't mean it changes anything. You, you just got to dig deeper and go. And so that was, that was, the, that, that was my point. And that's what, I, but I also understand um, how it could be interpreted because he's my boy. And, and, but I, but you know, it, I mean, let's be honest. I, I mean, for four years or five years, I named the show Beige Philip, and we've done nothing but give props for, we've, we've done nothing but that. So, right. I mean, all of a sudden now, right. because of the fact that we're talking about the real, what's the real story and what's, what's the, and the fact that you see the vulnerability in your idols is, is what, is what shows you the humanity of where you wanting to reach your goals are possible. It's possible because we're all flawed. In ways for me and everybody else, including Patrice. And so, but but stop sweeping it under the rug because then you become the dude who doesn't, you know, who sweeps up the kitchen and doesn't clean that last line at the dustpan. You just be a dude that sweeps the dirt under the refrigerator. And, and then and then you're you're worried about being exposed because you weren't truthful in the in the first place. Yeah. Hey, we got some more. Uh, I actually have some more questions from people if you want to answer sure, through the sure. comment section. I was just going through it. Some stuff. You can, by the way, follow uh, Man School 202 on Instagram. Uh, we're going to be doing some live shows on Instagram uh, soon. And then also on the YouTube channel, Man, to, Man School 202. We got new content there all the time. And uh, so one of the questions was, is it possible to attain proficiency to hunt rabbits, deers, wolves, and bears at the same time? So this is an old thing we used to kind of, Talk this about this is a prime example. Yeah. Initially, the philosophy was that women come in three categories: rabbits, deers, and bears. Right? Rabbits being very calm and timid, very frail, fragile, frail women easily just scared easily away, easily scared away, easily offended, whatever. Deers are kind of like um, where you got to be. You know, you need to be respectful, but you can be more honest, but not. Uh, and bears are aggressive, kind of abusive women who you need to meet with them, meet them with the same kind of energy in order to get the respect from them. Right. And we always talked about this in terms of you have these different categories. And so it's, it's sort of like we were trying to create a flow chart where we were really trying to create a flow chart where, OK, identify what you're chasing identify what you like and then this is the technique for that since then we i think we've 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 evolved and said if you are um being the best version of yourself if you understand what your value is so here's an example i will often get questions about Yo, I met this girl on Tinder, or I met her on Instagram, and we were supposed to hook up, and then she flaked, and then da da, da 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 da. Yo, what's the technique? What's the best way to do this? What's the best? People always want, they want the answer. Now, he, the fact that you're asking the question infers a few things. It infers that you don't think that you should be in this game in the first place. It means that you're already playing above your head. Reason being, because if you, if you say if you're playing, a, 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 if you, you, you're boxing, you only strategize when you think that you're fighting somebody who is out of your league. So you need to go in with a game plan. Right. But when you feel as though you are you're, you're, the person that you're you're matched up with is not even in your class, there's you don't have to you know what you do. Right. 
you know how to adjust on the fly. You just get in the game and you and you 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 do what you do. How long should I call a girl after we went out on a date? You should call the girl when you want to. Now, there's all these rules about, you know, you should do this two days later, three days later, don't do too much, don't do well. Yeah, I can teach you the technique of it and what those, what those techniques communicate. But the reality is, if you like somebody and you think that you're worthy of this person that you're, that you're going after, so you call them the next day. Hey, what's up? I had a great time. Such and such and such and such and such. And if they're going to go, oh, this dude, this dude's on my dick because he called me the next day. This is something you already know that you're dealing with somebody who doesn't, who is already trying, they're already playing games. Already unappreciative. They're already. But they're already playing difficult. games because they're going, oh, you, you call me too early. So you like me too much. So because you like me too much, I don't like you. I'm going to take advantage of you. I'll say this though, from my end, something that I had to get over with, uh, over from was that I did like women too much early on because my value was so low though that was part of it That's so what I'm any saying. woman who would give me attention i was super eager and thrilled with that attention so i had i had to do two things one i had to learn to hold back because i was super over eager but as time went on i my value became higher to myself because i got some wins under my belt and i and i knew i was a good person man i'm a good person to hang out with and if you don't want, it gets to the point where even with rejection, it didn't hurt as much because you're like, listen, I know what my skills are. I know what I bring to the table. If you don't want to, if you don't want to hang out, you don't want to be on this party train, then that's on you to be right. quite honest. It's silly see, saying it, but if you don't, if, that's on I'm, you. All right, good. You did me a favor. I, it's, I've been watching these videos on Instagram with a guy where a guy goes to holler at a girl. She's like, no, I got a boyfriend. Uh, and then he he gets in a, in, a, in a Lamborghini and the girl acted like she's twisted her ankle. And then she comes back and she, oh, I twisted my ankle. Um, Oh, this is your car? Like, right? So then she's like, oh, because you, you should pay my doctor's bills because I, like, it just, like, all of a sudden she sees a $300,000 car and now her perspective on this guy He's showing his car is showing her that he has a level of value that he that she didn't think he had in the first place. But that and also so, makes her rotten. Like, why would you want to be with somebody? It just makes her dumb. Why would you sprain your ankle and get your what doctor bill, bitch? Well, it's she just, didn't. Yeah, it was just dumb. It's it, just it, stupid. Try something yeah, else. But <laughs> the point was, but it's not even try something else. This is somebody who has just saw your car and decided yeah. because you have a car. Now you have a three hundred thousand dollar car, four hundred thousand dollar car. Now you have value. Um. So, is that the person you really want to be with anyway? Like, if, if somebody right. just awful. wants you, they're just awful. Who Who wants to do that? Like, I, I. And so I get it. Dudes are gonna go. Well, yo, I don't care. I'll I'll discount my manhood. I'll do anything if I, as long as I could beat, as long as I can get some neck. I'll tell her anything. Yeah, but what happens is. <laughs> This chick is going to – That doesn't whatever. stop. You train yourself to do that, and you don't realize that never stops if that's it the never game stops. you play. And you never, uh, you're never playing above the rim in the first place because you don't think that you could play above the rim anyway. So now you're in situation. So here's this woman you don't even know just because she's attractive or she got a fatty or she's real pretty or she whatever. Now you're play, you're, you, you've decided that her physical looks – supersede everything about your character that is is that gives you value and 100 percent, she could decide that your your four hundred thousand dollar car is all she wants but the real question is that is that the chick that you want even if you just go on even if you rent the car to get girls this you 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 still are in a situation where Deep down, you don't ever get any personal growth because you know that the car is the only thing that has value. So the things that you really are, the, 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 your soul, your, your character, your, your integrity, your authenticity, all of those things have no value to her. The only thing that has any value to the, is the car. 
So is this a girl that you want to you want to be with? Because all somebody got to do is roll up with a better car or somebody with a little more money or somebody with a little more prestige. And she's out anyway. So she never I, I, I've never wanted to like I never wanted to be with somebody who didn't want to be with me. So if you don't want to be with me, I'm good. I'm really good. You know, we could stop that. Anyway, let's shut it down, dog. Uh, we way over the over the top. Uh, uh, Dre, kick your social media, make it quick. Andre D. Thompson, that's just detected on the internet. Yeah. Uh, dope, dope. Uh, Harry? Uh, you could go to at Harry Turjanian for everything. Uh, Catalyst Wrestling uh, on YouTube every uh Every week, free episodes. And also check out the Man School 202 YouTube page. That's where everything's going down. We're releasing new episodes, classic episodes, clips, the whole deal. Yeah, yo, Google me, bitch. Uh, <laughs> Dante Nero, everything. And whatever you want to find, my Instagram, DanteNero.com. If you want a one-on-one consultation, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? Uh, Sexual Revolution is being podcast. Andre's acting like Phil. Um, <laughs> uh, yo, I love y'all, man. If you like what we're doing, yo, hit us back. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Um, we are out. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero. Hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.